We started our first morning off here in Hakodate, coming over to the market that was directly next to our hotel, coincidentally. Because everything it's not is... coincidental, it's not coincidental, it's Hakodate. Yeah, it's just everything is Hakodate, really close. it was very close to my place. <laughs> so this market is a fish market and it's because Hakodate is a oceanside city. And we thought that we were going to come over here and we were going to find some breakfast because that's kind of what rolls here. This like opens at like 5 a.m. And it's sort of a mixture between a fish market where people come to buy fish for their restaurants or people that local here come and get their seafood. And also it's like half a tourist bunch of tourist stuff. And that's fine. But it's copy and paste from various other places we've seen. It's not really unique. And I think about like, we were just across the bay over in Aomori a while ago, and they had this fish market where you go through with these like little tickets and like you get to pick like a this and a that and a this and a that, and then you make everything and you sit down, blah, blah, blah. This does not have a system like that. This just has like restaurants where you can sit down and order a meal. So it's not that exciting really it just sort of is like the place is interesting i guess is kind of what the deal is the only thing that they're doing that is different and something i don't know if i've ever seen this before is there's a whole bunch of places and again tourist stuff where they've got these big pools and in the pools are squid ika and you catch your own ika for a thousand yen and then they cut, cut it, it up, up and you eat it right there mm. <laughs> which is like, I don't know, it's pretty intense because like you just caught the thing and like blah, blah, blah. I mean, we caught a fish one time at a restaurant and we ate the fish right after that, but mm. I don't know. We're just not feeling it. <laughs> like, yeah, both I sat of us there and stared kinda, like, at them because they're just sitting in the pool and they're just, they're just floating and hanging out. And I was just like, I'm just not into doing that right now. Yeah. <laughs> So and I know that I could. It's mm. not a problem and I'd eat it and be like, wow, but I just don't need to murder him this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't have that. <laughs> you don't have like a ravenous uh, need to murder. Thirst for Ika blood. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't wake for up. Ika ink. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't wake up. And there were a couple of other things that I read about on the internet that we were looking for, but we couldn't find them. Like then I don't I just think they're not happening. Still looking for the uh Ikaman. Yeah, it's like a nikuman, which is like a, a steamed bun with meat in it usually, but they make a black one with ink out of Ika ink, and then they put an Ika inside. Um, and I, I think that this place might be, I, we've been using the phrase corona closed about things that die because of like co like COVID restrictions and stuff like that. I think this one, what, did I, what was the phrase? COVID crippled. COVID crippled, yeah. It's a little, are we using crippled? Are we allowed to say that out loud? Anyways. It, about a store, I think it's okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> it feels a little bit like this place is like limping along because there's not enough tourism to keep the things alive. So I'm wondering if we're looking for this Ikamon that just doesn't exist right now. Hmm. Or maybe it's out of season or something. Who knows? Like, I don't, I don't know. Motherfucker, go fishing. Don't make me go fishing. You go <laughs> fishing and then stuff it in a bun. <laughs> um, are we going to convince you to eat some Ikameshi though? Maybe. It doesn't look good. It looks like testicles. Like, like, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Not even the good kind? <laughs> Not even the good kind. You said that this thing looked like balls. It doesn't look like balls at all. It looks the ones like. The and the other ones look like two little testicles just hanging out in the bag. You you have to put it on there now so that people can see the the alien testicles. Yes, this definitely doesn't look like that. But it's a it's a larger. I was gonna call it a bird, seabird. It's a different kind of bird. So this is a squid that they have gutted and then jammed rice inside of, yep. and then cooked in some sort of something to give it like a sauce. Uh, I, I imagine it's kind of a sea, uh, soy sauce jacuzzi. Yeah, and I asked her like, yo, do we need to do anything else? Like add like soy sauce or something? And she was like, nope, just eat it as it is. That's the way you do it. And, uh, I guess it's not so weird when you see like fried eco rings or whatever. So you didn't know that this is the best part of the squid. No. It is the best part of the squid because the texture of it is, depending on how you cook it, it's soft and it kind of has like a, 
Jesus factor to it. I don't know how to explain it better than that, and people might disagree with me. But then you've just stuffed it with delicious rice. Is it just rice, or is there anything in the rice? It looks like the rice, I mean, the rice is like brown, so I'm um, assuming it's been just... The rice has been cooked, but it also may have just been soaking into, because there's... It, this Ica was not sealed off when it was put into the thing, so it's just been in the same um, juices. This Ika Meishi was actually kind of hard to find, not in a package. We had to walk around the market quite a bit before we finally found a restaurant that was actually brewing or stewing some of it out front. Most of the places seem like they're just selling it like in like pre-packaged, like, like, you know, so you can take it home like and give it away as gifts or whatever, omiyage to people. It, it doesn't feel like it's like something that's like super commonly made, at least in this little area, comparatively anyways, uh, fresh. So, you have bones? Man, I don't know, man. These things are from space. I don't know anything about what's going on. things I want to talk about. Number one, the bone inside of the squid is called the pen. And I completely forgot about this, but once I looked up what's the difference between a cuttlefish and a squid, we had a chat. It was a thing. And uh, it told me about that pen and it reminded me of when I was in like elementary or middle school, we dissected a squid and we took out the, the pen and we wrote with it. And you like dipped it in ink and we did that. Might have been high school, don't know. Somebody was letting me cut things open. <laughs> um, so that was kind of cool and a refresher on random weird incidences that happened in my life. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that the vending machines here, they look normal, but they're missing a component, which is the trash can for cans or bottles or whatever you purchase from the vending machines. In Tokyo, it's mandatory that all vending machines have a little trash can next to them. Here in Hokkaido, from what we've seen, that's not mandatory. I'm not at all. sure if it's like a legislated thing or something. I don't know why, but it, it does seem like it's like a rule. Yeah, it neither seems like it's a rule or it's so ingrained that every single vending machine has a buddy. Yeah, but it is it is a bit of a bummer that you can't even find places to throw cans up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, I, so I am now. You got yourself a buddy. That guy's going back to Tokyo with you. Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> we've come to probably Hakodate's most famous park. It's called Goryo Kaku and it is unique because of its shape. It's almost like a star shape. It is designed in the way that a European fortress would have been designed, like in the 1800s, apparently according to the sign over there. And it's got kind of an interesting history because when the Shogunate was falling apart at the uh, during the Meiji Restora Restoration, Meiji Restoration, they ended up, the last, the last Shogunate supporting type of people ended up coming to this fortress and bunkering down before the imperial armor came and cleared them all out and basically ended the rebellions and moved into like the new imperial era that Japan had entered during that time period. So this, that's what that's what this is like famous for. Like it's a final battle before Japan became more modernized during the late late 1800s. Um, I think that it's really cool that it's shaped like this and it's obviously shaped like this because of like it's easier to protect and things like that like there's reasons for it but i don't know how striking it's gonna be walking around in it because like it's so big that are we even gonna notice that we're inside <laughs> that we're inside of this this shape so they put this tower up and you can go up in a tower and get an overlooked shot of it but it's 900 yen per person just to go up the elevator and i was kind of like well if i want to soak what this looks like then I can probably just use Google Maps, and that's what I'm probably going to do. I'm driving right now. Why are you bugging me? We're almost there. Don't make me turn this boat around. <laughs> it took you like 10 minutes to turn this boat around a minute ago. 
Yeah, and you'll have to go through the frustration of watching me with the boat doing that. As you can see, there's a moat going around this star-shaped fortress. And Katie saw boats and like, Katie's in the boats. I, I don't really know why, like it's fine. I just like, <laughs> so she was like, I wanna paddle around this thing, so. Well, I, we've done a lot of like little park walks and I saw a way to do something different today that actually wasn't just us walking around a park. And I scared some ducks. And this, this is going pretty good so far. I'm not terrified. We've got 50 minutes to circumnavigate this thing. And I'm watching the map. It's gonna be close. Because we gotta we gotta get around this thing. <laughs> Within 50 minutes, that's how long the boat rental is. But it's Japan, so I kind of feel like they know it takes about 45 minutes to go around the thing. So they give you 50 minutes for the rental. That's kind of what my guess is. So especially when you got somebody strong like this, like with the muscles from Brussels, like <laughs> Rowan, we got no problems. We'll make it, right? Yep. Since this is kind of like, I don't have a lot to do. I decided to live stream Katie paddling around here. So we're over here. <laughs> we're over here on the Instagrams. Uh, ElonFan69 says, hi YouTube. I don't think that the camera can see the thing. Maybe I can get it bright enough. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to expose for this. Um, but anyway, yeah. So this is just a reminder to follow us on Instagram if you want to see us do live streaming stuff. Or also on Twitch where I would, could be live streaming, I suppose. That's a harder setup though, so this is better for Instagram. All right. I think we're nearing the last turn to the uh, port where you drop off the boat. I don't really know how long it's been. We did go around the whole thing. I'm really glad. Even if it costs a little more money than expected, I don't care. I, I would have rather done the whole thing then go out and just turn around like a sissy. I don't sissy. <laughs> so we've done the whole thing. I only hit that one bridge at the beginning, but I didn't know how boats worked at that point. I still am working on how boats work, but I'm doing better. Yeah, dude, if you go around that corner, it's gonna, we're gonna be there basically. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. It would be fun if you lived here, like had access to this boat without paying this much money to come out here and like, do it every day and get, every real day and get really ripped. I don't know if I'd get ripped. You get ripped, baby. But I would uh, definitely be more boatable. Hi. Hi. If you wanted to feel the shape, drive the boat. I felt every one of those angles of that star. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah that's so a really good I, way I to know that. I definitely felt the whole experience and I feel really, like this is a really good start to the day. They didn't charge us any extra even though it took us probably 55 minutes to get yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, it probably <laughs> took about 55 minutes, but I guess since we didn't roll over the extra 10 minutes, they didn't charge us at all, so victory. In the middle of the Star Fortress, there is a very unique looking building that is a part of a collection of a couple of other buildings. My understanding is that this was a center of government, basically, when the Imperial Japanese government in the late 1800s started moving into Hokkaido. And they had built this or used this fortification because there probably were opposing forces, <laughs> let's put it that way. They didn't want them in the region. So this was a safe place for them to put things. And this building here is the Japanese magistrate's office, or well, it was, it's a museum now. It's striking because it seems really like a good cross between like a Western style building, especially with like the, the top, the watchtower and stuff, just the way it looks it feels not quite Japanese, but then adorned with Japanese decorations and the tiles on the roof and everything feel very Japanese and the wooden structure feels very Japanese, but there's just something about it that's not quite like other Japanese castles that you'll see in other parts of Japan. And it could be that this would have been built later than a majority of those would have been like originally designed when they were originally constructed because this was one of the later parts of Japan to be inhabited by the Japanese government.
That shit is sick. I literally look big here. <laughs> you do. <laughs> really, on this side of it, I'm like huge, and you're like like in the background. Yeah, it's like one yeah, of those warped back rooms. Like this. Um, we've come to the Clown Burger Restaurant. It's called Lucky Piero, and Piero in Japanese means clown, but it also means clown in French, I believe. I think that's where it comes from. Mm. He peddles the burgers, and one thing that's interesting is that each shop has its own theme. And I just spent time, because we came into this restaurant and I sat down and I couldn't figure out what the theme was. And it turns out that the theme for this restaurant is an actual artist. There are a few that they do artists. And uh, this one is Gustave Clement. I, I did not know who this person was. Uh, his, his art's on the walls. The art is on the walls. I'm not even going to try and like say what I think it is. It seems to be very female driven. He likes to draw women and I can appreciate it. The the deal with this place is that when we came down into Hakodate on the train or on the, on the, in the car yesterday, we kept seeing this restaurant over and over like roadside type things. And they were big and like weird, like the way that they were all decorated. And then we got into the town and we saw one this morning that was across the street from the morning market and it opens at eight and starts slinging burgers and we were there at nine and there was a line was of a people line. so we were like okay so like this must be like a thing so we googled it a little bit and we found out that it's like a thing where there's a whole bunch of them in Hakodate. we couldn't clarify whether or not they're from here but there's a lot of them here and it's sort of like a touristy thing but maybe if there's 17 of them they must have a local draw too this is a mess inside of this burger we're gonna need to Pause for some B-roll. Well, maybe use this. <laughs> Hold on, let's boot the GoPro. Oh my god. I don't know how to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> Open it up and give it some light. Yeah, that's a, uh, a messy burger, y'all. And other themes that they have include movies or Christmas or Audrey Hepburn. Oh, that would have been a cool one to go to. The I like Audrey Hepburn would have been a cool one. Um, She's a babe. The only ones that we had the options to go to were the angels, where you'd be surrounded by cherubs, and that's terrifying. That's yeah, scary. Um, Almost scarier than we, the clowns. We came to this artist one, and then the other one that's near the station front is like an art deco kind of thing, where it's just like artwork all over the place. No, not like a direct art theme. Uh, we also got some fries that have got like a gravy kind of on them, I guess is the best way to explain what I'm looking at. It smells like a church, uh, church um, spaghetti. Church spaghetti? Mm -hmm. Why is that a thing in your memory banks? Because we've been to many church spaghetti nights. It's all right, the fry is kind of not good, but the topping is pretty okay. That's what's hard about um, fries that get uh, toppings. They sog. I'm familiar with this flavor, like this gravy-esque flavor. It's almost like chili dog kind of, it's sort of. For me, where chili, where chili would have like an aggressive bite uh, or like a little bit of spice, mm. it's also spaghetti meat sauce-esque. So it's kind of like a little dulled down. The oh, burger there. that Katie has that we showed already was an egg, egg raki Egg Lucky Baga, I think is what egg it was Lucky called. Lucky yeah, so it's like the Lucky Egg Burger. And um, I have the, and I'm, I'm, this is, this literally says this in Katakana, the Chinese Chicken Burger. There's all these stories on the website talking about like the founder's dad taking them to cafes and all this stuff. <laughs> it's like this whole the, war. The Each burger has a read. war. I, I'd have to say it was a really fun read. The place is just quirky in general and even at the front it's kind of chaotic. It kind of feels like a Don Quixote. They're selling like curry and different types of sodas and they're like they're talking about their oolong tea that's like super famous and it's just like a scatter shot of things that's going on. It's not like just like here's the burger. It's like here's the burger and then like a market kind of. Here's the burger and good luck eating it. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Um, I can smell the pickles though. Um, so of note, first off, the 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 burger has got sesame seeds on the top and the bottom of the bun. Are you seeing this? Mm, yeah. So we've got sesame up top, sesame on the bottom, and chicken then in the middle. chicken in the middle. It's bigger than my face. This is a definite knife and fork situation. Did you try to get in there already? Yeah, that's how big my mouth is. 
We're gonna just definitely need an action cam. You're gonna need more than one napkin. No. <laughs> Alright, so this is apparently the Chinese chicken burger is their famous burger. It's like the one that is like the most thought after or whatever, the Icky Bun Minky burger or whatever. <laughs> This is one of the best burgers I've had. This is very good as well. It's very good. And these weren't expensive. These were like 300 or 400 yen a piece, something like that. I thought this clown was gonna like ruin my day. Yeah, I did too, because it was like Cause sometimes these touristy things. Just... And, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is just nugs. And then they're just sauced really well and deep fried. And I mean, yeah, it's a chicken burger, but they've used like. I don't know the sauce, but like kind of like a Swedish sourish type of sauce mm -hmm. to, to, to flavor it. And the bird is really juicy. It's really, really hot. <laughs> really hot? Mm -hmm. Did we only get one napkin for real? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and we're sharing that napkin. There's an insufficient number of napkins. Yeah. Um, and the last thing on the menu was we got a garana. So we're in Hokkaido, and like I've mentioned in the past, Garana is like an energy drink from South America that Hokkaido has adopted into being their soda of choice. And it's really strange that a restaurant would have its own branded soda in a can. Yeah, yeah, it is mm. a little weird, but I love this stuff. And we earlier smells, saw like an entire vending machine dedicated to this drink. Mm, it smells like all, all the other Garanas. Mm -hmm. I would go as clouds? far to say that they have repackaged the, I think Keaton is the one that I'm thinking of. I know a lot of good on us, I've had a lot of them. It feels just like the, a repackaged other one. Mm, it's a really soft. It doesn't have, so I was gonna actually see if it had a logo from a different company on it or something. Um, yeah, I don't see anything that's given me any clues. Yeah. They've repackaged it really well. Yeah, I mean it's fine. It's good. It's just it doesn't taste unique. Mm. But uh, yeah, this is the this is the lucky clown, y'all. <laughs> I would recommend coming. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, I am not disappointed at all. <laughs> when we were getting on to the tram earlier, that I forgot to mention, there's a tram in this city, and it kind of doesn't go a whole lot of places, but it's a cool way to get around. I like trams in general, like streetcars. So there's a tram and that's what we used to get to that park earlier. And when we got on it, I noticed this on the sign, there was this thing that said like the traffic park. I was like, what's a traffic park? So when we were eating our burgers, I looked up like, what's a traffic park? And this is a traffic park. It's a place where you can come, you can drive go-karts around on like a little course. And I was like, okay, usually those things are kind of expensive or whatever, like it's 500 yen, a thousand yen, something like that. And on the webpage, it said it was 60, six zero yen per lap. And I was like, we're going there. And it was only 500 meters away. So we walked over here and we got in line and I'm like standing there looking around. I'm like, everybody here has a child. <laughs> like it's like an adult and a child and an adult and a child and an adult and a child. And this, uh, one of the older dudes that works here came up and was like, so like, you gotta have a kid to do this. <laughs> and we don't have a kid. So we don't get to go and spend 60 yen to do a lap on this little guys. I'm not super sure I was gonna fit anyways. But I'm a little bummed that I don't get to cruise around. And now I'm thinking like, where can I just rent a kid for a little bit to do a few laps in this thing? Because even if I have to pay to rent the kid, 60 yen a lap is still pretty cheap. I saw a kid over here, I waved at him. Did you wave at yeah, kid? Yeah, I waved at a kid like not even a block away. What, what would this old man do if we showed up with a couple of Japanese kids in like 20 minutes? <laughs> Eric has realized that this is even more traffic oriented than we thought. This is a traffic park. There are stoplights set up in there, little pedestrian crosswalks and such where people have to stop and they need to do what needs to happen at that intersection, at least hopefully correctly, without any real consequence. So the kids are getting introduced to how the streets function and that's genius. I think, I, yeah, dude, and it, not only does it help them like grow up and figure out how to drive, it helps them know how to be pedestrians. Yes. This is what the cars are seeing. Mm. It's like a really good safety thing. This yeah. is amazing. 
and it's a great way to start the driving relationship with your parents at a younger age because I started the driving relationship at like 16 and I think it was just terrible for everyone involved. <laughs> It was very terrible. I'll be real, it's kind of still kind of terrible being your passenger. <laughs> it's pretty scary. That is not true. Well, you did good. No scares this whole trip. Yeah. I'll give you that. Thanks. <laughs> this sounds nasty, right? Am I crazy? This, that word guzzler doesn't... <laughs> He's just drinking the beer. The grave beard guzzler? I don't get a nasty out of that. All right. You'll have to paint me a picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's not safe for work, man. Taking the tram down to Motomachi, and it's well known for European style buildings, which has become a trend in our travels lately. And shockingly, we didn't find these places like in the last 10 years before now. But we didn't hit a European building upon coming here. We've hit this gigantic temple that you see behind me. And this turns out to be the first concrete reinforced temple to have been made in all of Japan. When they decided to change this temple to a concrete reinforced temple, people were weirded out for two reasons. One, they thought that it might be gross to have uh, a material that people's feet had been on as part of the makings of the building that it was impure and they did not like that like rock i guess like that's what they were yeah, thinking something like yeah, that instead of a and tree yeah the second one was that they were worried that it wouldn't be able to hold this massive roof and that is a big roof so i can understand the worry there and it turns out that to show the structural integrity <laughs> of the concrete, they would have shows with geishas dancing on it so that it would encourage people to donate to this project. Motomachi is definitely a place that's got a Western influence. There's a lot of churches and stuff, but there's also just a splattering of other types of religious places. There's shrines and things like that and stuff. And it's all up on a hill, which makes it Europeans really feel- love hills. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. It really feels like, uh, it really feels like Kobe, but in like, in setting, but not in buildings. The buildings feel a lot different. Buildings definitely feel different. I, feel, I don't remember this much religious stuff in Kobe. Maybe I'm just yeah, like filtering it out. Yeah, that commercial, but more industrial. Not industrial, but like administrative. That it was is administrative, like. and mm -hmm. that there was an industry in which the Europeans were thriving, mm. and it was to live and continue in that industry. This seems like the Europeans were implanting themselves and trying to spread their thoughts. Maybe, that's, yeah. That's yeah. what this feels like. There, but there's, it's obvious that there was a pretty heavy Christian influence in this area. And I believe I actually read that. It's like, this is kind of like the North's Nagasaki, where Nagasaki had a lot of churches and stuff. And mm. I've, I've heard that the Hakodate area is kind of similar to that. Um, the bummer is that one of the buildings that is like the main draw is the Russian Orthodox Church and it is currently under renovations which I mean it's a bummer for us but you know they got to renovate their building sometime and it could be I was thinking maybe they're just doing that because like you know COVID is happening and there's not much tourism it's an opportunity to do it without disturbing too many people's visits mm. so if that's what's going on I'll take the hit it's fine but um, yeah, we didn't get to see that. It's just, it's all, it's all covered up. <laughs> I'm fine with that because the building we're sitting at right now is pretty radical looking. I, I've just, every angle we've seen it from, I've just been like, so that's a thing? <laughs> Super unique looking structure <laughs> yeah. and all the flowers in bloom in front of it. It's a nice touch. God did it. These are godly flowers. So they got this cute little building that you go into to go to the bathroom. It's just filled with squatters. That's not very, like, were the Europeans using the squatters? I, I just don't feel like that's, I don't feel like that assimilation was taking place. So I feel like they've, they've, they've done it wrong in that room. <laughs> I'm not going to claim to know a lot about this, but this is marked on Google as a, the most famous slope in Hakodate. <laughs> it's a nice, wide, cobble-ish stone. Not cobble, but like, you know what I mean? Like, not just like paved road, but like a nice road and cars can go down it. What's the grade? I need to know the grade. Yeah, I guess I, I, don't, I don't see any markers that are going to give us like an angle or anything. But it's just that I think that it goes down and you can see the ocean and this is a nice view. I think that's the point of it. And uh, there's just like those 
people over here, like taking pictures with it and stuff, kind of like what we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it has some level of importance that I'm not super clear on, but it's here. So we're not gonna mention the dude behind us, what, right? What not, gonna, not gonna mention <laughs> him at all. We've come to the British consulate, or the old British consulate that's up in the hill here in Motomachi. And they do afternoon tea until 3 p.m., which is just awesome, except for we got here at like 3.15. 3.17. Three three so instead of having the afternoon tea set, like what we were hoping to have, we've just gotten a couple of cakes and a couple of teas, and we're gonna make the best of it. it that's saving us some money. It's, it's saving us 2,000 yen. I can, I can live with that. Yeah, but I, I'd be honest with you, I've been looking forward to this afternoon tea. That's a motherfucker that's been looking forward to something he doesn't know the time of. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That is accurate information. I was like, oh, fika happens at 3.30, but I forgot we're not doing fika, we're doing afternoon tea. It's not the yeah, same thing. You gotta live on a British clock. Yeah, the British clock is different. It's no longer afternoon. Um, I, hold on a second, I gotta... I don't know how much this is. We'll just do two pills. Okay, so here's the thing. I have to take these pills to help myself di di digest lactose. Or it says cheese in the name, Eric Klein. I think maybe you need more, you need the, the right amount of... However, when we packed these for this trip, we forgot to bring a bunch of extra pills. We didn't bring a week's worth. So we've been like careful about this. I'm like undergunning how many I'm taking. So I have one left for tomorrow. Has the undergunning gone okay? No, we, still no issues? The, I, I, we have to stop this for a second because it's about to run out of memory card space. Uh. All right, so for me, it's curious. That's 256 gigs. If you've been tracking our, Hokka, our uh, Hokkaido trip, that's how much this minute and the videos up until that point is how much 256 gigs of memory takes. So it's not really that much. But anyways, um, we're hooked back up and you're asking me if I've been having any problems because we've been limiting the pills. I've kind of been avoiding things with milk in them. So I haven't, don't think yeah, I've had, had any Mr. problems. had Mr. Donut earlier today. <laughs> It was fine though. I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah. So I've been Such taking <laughs> small, maybe less pills than I usually do. Maybe this is teaching me I can take less pills than I normally do. Yeah, well, that's, what they, yeah, that's yeah. why I was asking. Has the restriction on pills benefited you in some reason? No. It worked well. Mm -hmm. If you were having major problems because you weren't eating enough of the pills, then hmm. Okay. So I got a rare cheesecake, which surprised you. And you yeah, had very, I ordered very what thing. you would normally order. Okay. Um, uh, two, the fact that they're just playing, they were just playing the Beatles, but then they were playing the animals and they're just playing like, like random British like bands, 60, the sixties era British rock bands in this, uh, classy consulate. <laughs> and I just think it's kind of funny because the, the vibe is contrary. Mm. <laughs> I don't understand like, oh my God, it's actually really good. I don't understand why the cheesecake is rare, to be honest with you, because like, rare I feel mean... like you can order it everywhere. Oh God, are you just making a joke? No, like, does it mean uncooked? Is that what it means? Mm -hmm. Oh God, you roll your eyes at my dad jokes? Yeah. I'm gonna take some yeah, of your berries. That's, it's very similar to uh, how my mom would make it. It's got that cream cheesy mm. tang to it. I think I made the right decision, but the chocolate on the bottom of yours ain't bad. It's not really that much chocolate. But it's like it's, it's like, a spongy chocolate. I kind of liked how it followed through on the flavor. Mm. Earlier, we went over to the star-shaped fortress area, and that had been where they had moved some of the administrative buildings for the government uh, that had ministered this area in like the late 1800s. And before it had been located there, it was located in this building. And the reason it was moved is that this was too susceptible from attack from the sea. Mm, so it they is were really like, close. yeah. So even though it's up a hill and stuff, I think that this is more fortified. There's, a little further there inland. There are not as many vertical rocks there are here. Not as many they, vertical they, they rocks need here. More of those. Yeah, uh, but I didn't expect that we were just going to wander past, like, the the previous. 
the previous previous, I think. I think that's probably right. And now it's a city hall, like wherever city hall is. Mm. <laughs> uh, but again, this was built in a very like Western style whenever it was constructed and it's been like renovated since then and stuff. But um, it sits underneath another building that's a little further up the hill that's really striking looking. The colors it's called are really the crazy. The Money Bucks Building. Because, uh, unofficially, in Katie Go, <laughs> called the Money Bucks, <laughs> the Money Bucks building. building. Did you look up what it was by any chance? On Google it's Maps? the former public hall. So I think it's just not an extension of what's behind us, but they're doing the same type of work. When we were walking on the other side of this area, it was like churches and stuff. And then we came over here and it became more administrative and mm. things like that. And this feels a little more like kind of what we saw in the Kobe area when we walked around their Western influence neighborhood. Cause we're just like a, a block away from the British consulate, mm. which I'm assuming probably at that time had quite a bit of sway. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they did have cakes that people I'm wanted to eat. Sure. <laughs> 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 That's how you get power. Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing you to do with like. <laughs> it has to do with like. Something. So you built in an, return. <laughs> a worldwide empire. <laughs> uh, scones. One scone at a time. <laughs> um, let's walk. Do you think we are we allowed to go inside that thing? I don't, I, I don't know if it's free. And it might not even be like, open still because we yeah. kind of got kicked out of the British consulate. It's after four o'clock now. So. Yeah. Real talk. I'm kind of expecting to see jazz get thrown out the front of this thing. <laughs> It started to sprinkle a little bit. Bad weather is not invited on my party at all. <laughs> uh, we're still walking around the European area and found this little stand on the side of the road that is talking about shio, which is uh, salt. And it's saying that it's made from kombu. I don't know how you salt a kombu. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, know don't know either. I think they, they, they usually sell kombu here, but it's out of stock at the moment. <laughs> But this says, this really does say Hakodate Kombu Shio. Yeah. So I guess you can get the Salt Shio from, from the Kombu somehow. And Kombu is like kelp, I guess. Is I guess that how you, you say that in English? You water out of it. And if it's coming from salt water, then you evaporate it and it has salt in it. So I see a process, but I don't know if that's how they're doing it. This is one of those cute little things where there's not a staff member or anything. You just come and put your change up in the little bucket. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy it. Are you really? Yep. Is it just 100 yen? Oh, it is just 100 yen. Whoop. I'm gonna do that. Done. Transaction. So one of the famous things to do in Hakodate is to come up to a mountain that sits kind of on a peninsula that goes out to the sea. And you get the opportunity to see Hakodate, the city, properly. The time that people like to do that is in the evening because you can see the lights turn on and stuff. So we've gone ahead and done this and you get to go up this like pretty cool like gondola. It's like a really big one. It went it's, faster than I expected yeah. like speed wise. It is fast and it swings around and stuff and it's kind of exciting to be honest. Mm. And then when you get up to the top is a big like observation tower system that they have that you can go to multiple floors of and whatnot and just get a really good overlook of the kind of unique shape of Hakodate because it sits on a, how do you even describe the shape of this? Um, yeah, like a, like a lady with a curve. Why about B-roll? I can just put it in. <laughs> I'm looking at some of the things that we saw today, like the tower, and I don't quite see the starred shape park that we went to, but it could be because it is a little rainy still, and it's a little foggy, and maybe it's a little bit too far. I'm not sure, maybe it's a combination of all the things. If that's the waist, are we all in the boo? Um, I don't know. Maybe on the boo. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. We're on the boo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'm looking at some things that maybe we'll do tomorrow. We're not sure or not yet or not. And if we do do them tomorrow, I have some pretty cool B-roll that I got to make up there of <laughs> such things. But at the moment, the camera is down here. And he is doing a time lapse. And we'll see if that time lapse came out. Uh, I'm always like, I don't know if I'm doing the right settings, so we'll find out together <laughs> when this gets edited and put together.
It's rainy. We took a taxi. We've come to a ramen place. This is actually winding up pretty good. Like rain sucks, but when you can get a bowl of noodles, kind of makes it worth it for the rain. And we've got the uh, Hakodate Speciality, Shio Ramen. I've been looking forward to this for weeks now, <laughs> just knowing that this was what was going on here. I quite like Shio Ramen because it's just kind of basic. It's not like a whole lot going on. And it reminds me of my childhood a little bit because of like chicken ramen, you know what I mean? Top ramen. <laughs> so I just kind of have an affection for it. And um, it's just, yeah man, it's like, it is chickeny. It's, a, it's like, it's like top ramen, but extraordinarily delicious top ramen. Um, I don't know if these noodles, like, like the yellow type of noodle, right? Oh, look at all the steam. This is like perfect, perfect rain food. Uh, noted by having straight noodles. Okay, so how about they noodles. Straight noodles. Okay, so like no crinkle at all. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, they're, that's just that's your straight noodle right there. It's very wholesome. Let's put it that way. This is very well made. We did a little bit of research to find like a couple of good places, and this was the one that made the most sense for us. Uh, the meat is yeah, it's good. I mean, it's just good. I would bring somebody here. We talk about that all the time. Like, would you bring somebody here? Yeah, I'd bring somebody here. This is good enough. And then we also got some hot Nihon Shu. Yep, that's strong. <laughs> so you have sort of not been jonesing this Shio ramen. You've kind of like, it's not, you keep saying little snide gum. It's like, it's my least favorite. Da, 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 da. You've been snotty about it. So let me ask you a question because like, there's not a whole lot left in that bowl. So I'm curious. A little bit of that is, uh, we've been here for a long time and you had more food than I had. So, <laughs> anyway, but you're asking what I think about these yeah, noodles. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, I can still definitely appreciate a soup without being excited about its necessary flavor. As you sit there slurping, you should... <laughs> <laughs> back here, um, back here eating some more, man. Yeah, good. true. Maybe they can hear it because of the circle. <laughs> but uh, it was cooked really, really well. It was satisfying. It was on point for what they're doing. Like, this is Shio to the max and the toppings were good, the noodles were cooked well. I have no complaints about this whatsoever. It's, it, it's a well done Shio. Now, if you want to talk about my opinion on Shio, it's the most boring. But I do see it as that comfort food, as that wholesome food, as that I'm not trying to make my taste buds dance. I just want to feel good. I make, I, I, it's just, it's just pure. There's something pure about it. The other place we looked at, there's a lot more stuff, like toppings and stuff. And I picked this one because it was more basic and I wanted basic. That's what I business wanted. Business card. Let's talk about the business card. The business card has three items for the menu. Yeah, that's and wonderful. More than likely, that's because they're trying to reduce down what they can get on a business card. But their menu basically kind of is that. It's not very much on top of their... Uh, Shio ramen. Um, yeah, I, I thought that it was great. I have no complaints about it. Um, Would you bring somebody here? Ooh, but that, that's, that's a whole other Katie problem. And <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't bring someone here because I'm trying to get on to the next one. <laughs> I, I would be noodle hopping all over the place here until I felt I had gotten the full taste and then I would take someone back. Yeah. I have more thoughts to that, but it would be like a long time for me to explain it. What are we doing? How are your hands um, doing, sweetheart? Oh, yeah, the blister video? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can get the light. Let me see if I can get down there. I think I got two of them. How do I show both of them? Yeah, you got one on each thumb. Yep, that's how you row a boat. <laughs> was it worth it? Do you feel like a badass? Yes. Right. That was such a victory. How are your shoulders? I think they're going to tell me tomorrow or the following day that I'm an asshole. <laughs> We started the morning with a walk over to a little cafe that 
we got our normal toast set breakfast we thing. We kind of got did. our normal toast set. There was some confusion with the ordering and we only got one meal. But anyways, the cool thing about this little cafe specifically was that the outside of it looks like a train. <laughs> like this dude just built like a little train and it's not like a tourist attraction. It's just a guy wanted a little cafe that looks like a train. So a guy made a little cafe that looks like a train. <laughs> and now we've got a few hours before we need to get onto another little train that's going to take us to an airport, that's going to take us to a airplane, that's going to a take us to a train, train, to a yeah, a whole bunch of things that's going to get us home. So we've just got a few a few hours left here in Hakodate and we don't really have a plan. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of explore a bit. We're back over in the same neighborhood we went to yesterday near Motomachi. And when we got off of the streetcar, when we came over here yesterday, it's, God, it's windy. <laughs> we noticed this thing that was just like on the side of the road, but for some reason we didn't come and talk about it. So I've been thinking about it and I was like, what was that thing? And it turns out that this is a tower that somebody would have gone up inside of. And I thought it was like for like watching traffic. But what it's actually for is a streetcar system so that they can use like a way of switching which direction the trains are gonna go. So some of the trains can go this direction, some of the trains can go this direction. And back in the day, they would use a dude up in here that would be manually making those switches. Now it's all like computerized and like it just happens automatically or whatever the person in the train can do it, who knows, I don't know. But it's done like without a dude in a tower. And there used to be a bunch of these towers around the Hakodate area and they've taken all of them down except for this one and it's sort of just become like a historical landmark at this point and it makes people go I wonder why that thing's there we've just basically turned around I, I wanted to get out of that wind I was <laughs> I had something else to say uh, you can see it looks a little <laughs> I feel like <laughs> is it cold <laughs> you do look like Kenny <laughs> The neighborhood here, I didn't realize this yesterday, it's called Juji Guy. And Juji is the kanji for like a cross and then the kanji for character. So it basically means like a cross thing. And Juji Ka means like the cross from Christianity, like the Jesus cross. And we're over in that neighborhood that has all the churches. And I was like, okay, is that like a clever name? Like Juji Guy, Guy means, I didn't get to the guy part. Guy means like neighborhood kind of. And so, this neighborhood is it is it juji guy because it's like the neighborhood of the cross or is it like juji like as in this is got a four-way cross where the tram can go one way and the other way and there's cars and everything or is it like a clever like double usage or whatever you know like it could, be, could be one of those it is it's clever now i don't know if it was intended but uh yeah it's cool kind of a nifty little neighborhood name well, I think we can safely say that we've uh, finished Hakodate, considering that we have found the oldest concrete electrical pole in the city. There's a plaque to it over there. It seriously is an important monument here, built in 1923. It looks like it's still kind of being used, but uh, not sure exactly if it is or if it's couple over here which people jokingly say this is the married couple of electrical poles. <laughs> it's a strange thing you see it on maps next to these streetcars and it has its own little explanation here concrete made a big move here in Hakodate apparently like that one temple that we found and then this pole people did not trust concrete back in the day can you imagine that <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how they had the geishas dance on these poles. <laughs> on <laughs> their tiptoe. <laughs> I also kind of like how the they've made the married couple is connected through this little like walking path. And one quick thing that you sort of not you weren't wrong, but it's the oldest electrical pole, concrete electrical pole in all of Japan. In all not of just, Japan. Not just not just Hakodate. Uh, yeah. Well, how about I, that? You know, I yeah, I definitely didn't express that but uh, you should know that. Might be on the test. <laughs> We've wandered into a visitor center, one, for some inspiration on what to do with the last uh, hour or two that we've got to wander around, and two, to get out of the wind. <laughs> and uh, we just saw the oldest like concrete light pole in Japan, and now we've come across another oldest, but this is the oldest manually operated elevator north of Tohoku. 
which is like the northern region of Honshu, the island that we're not on, we're on Hokkaido right now. This is a very specific, specific situation, but I don't know what's gonna happen if I push the button. I don't know if we can write in this or not. So I'm gonna push the button. We're gonna all find out together what happens. It doesn't seem like it's going to go opening for us, but it's a manual operating elevator, so maybe you need to have more skills. Maybe it's more than a button. Maybe it's a button and like I crank a thing and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, another oldest of the oldest, but only in a certain little area if you kind of take away some other things and change your definitions with the parentheses and an asterisk. <laughs> From the footage that we shot yesterday, you're going to be able to tell that Hakodate is a narrow little like this, and there's ocean on each side. So tsunamis are a thing that they're worried about here for obvious reasons. And this is a tsunami hazard map that shows how deep the tsunami waves could get in the event of a tsunami. It's a little bit ambiguous on some of the information here, but basically what this map is telling you is that if a tsunami happened, it could basically wipe out the entire city because it's all fairly low lying. Uh, the area where all the western buildings and stuff were built is above tsunami level and I wonder if that was done by design because, you know, back in the day that those people really had money. But yeah, you could have a seriously dangerous situation here and it's like it almost could just come through and just wipe out where everything is. Like this area has got a tremendous amount of buildup inside of it. So I, uh, I really hope that the way that the bay is built and everything is protecting things from some sort of future like catastrophic event because this would be pretty serious. It is final meal time here in Hokkaido, and this is actually the same type of meal we had on our first meal in Hokkaido, mm -hmm. which is soup curry. It's a Hokkaido speciality, and the reason I like it essentially is because it's covered in vegetables, and I love vegetables. And this really says a lot for how much you like it, that we've had it twice. Yeah, I, I really do dig soup curry. Yeah. And it's a little expensive, I think, for like a curry. You think curry, you think under a bill, basically. This can push into 1,500 yen or so, but I mean, look at all the vegetables in this. There's a lot going on here. Mm, doesn't even mention my sausage. I didn't even know, what, which one did you order? You ordered the sausage? I got the pork frank. And you still, <laughs> you still get to have some vegetables with yours, and you also get a side of rice that kind of goes, you kind of mix them back and forth between, et cetera, et cetera. Put a little bit of rice here, a little bit of soup curry there, and the curry is soupy, as the name would indicate. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a Hokkaido speciality, and you can get it outside of Hokkaido, but you know when you're in Hokkaido. You have soup curry. It's good. So, a little bit of rice, a little bit. And you can choose the spice levels. And if they have like a coconut base and stuff, I just want with like the standard. I got cheese in mine, and I honestly wasn't thinking that cheese really was necessary. I don't know if it's necessary yet still. But some of these veggies need to get submerged so they soften up. I like there's like a whole carrot. <laughs> in here and okra and nasu and like bengkong. Um, I'm going to look for, my favorite though is usually the kabocha. So I think I'm going to jump into a piece of kabocha. And how about, it's too big and cutting it in half is difficult. There's so many vegetables in my bowl that it's like sort of hard to eat. <laughs> Which is a good sign. Um, Found a pepper. I was going to ask you, kabocha is like a pumpkin thing. I was going to ask you, like this is kind of like the end of our time in Hokkaido. What uh, what sticks out to you? What did you? What what's a good thing that stuck out to you during our trip here for the past six days? Um, for food, that burger. The lucky piero burger. Yep. For activities, obviously that slide. That amazing slide we went on yesterday. The rocket thing? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that loop. Oh, <laughs> shit! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, Going against the uh, wall the entire time is not very... It, it doesn't make for speed. So many rollers just ran over my tailbone. And uh, 
That that cloud, that cloud that we saw, and I still don't understand. The mysterious cloud. The mysterious cloud that's gonna haunt my dreams. What about the or or like make my dreams better that clouds are just taking over. What I don't know. What about your robot adventure, man? Mm. What a victory. Mm. We were sitting here and we were thinking about how to kill some time before the train. And I just thought, you know, I should go do that boat again. We could do it faster this time. I told you if you lived in the area, you'd want to like try to lap things. Yeah, uh, but it's kind of expensive. <laughs> like, I don't want to mm. pay 2000 If they got like some sort of frequent rower club, club I'd get up in that. Um, I think that the thing that sticks out to me, the moment that sticks out to me the most that's this cool, is the moment that we sat in the bathtub and watched a bunch of fireworks mm. from our hotel. We've got our Ashiu, which is like a hot <laughs> pool of water for your feet. We've got our Rosé. We got a cool view. This yeah, worked out really it's well. It's really comfortable <laughs> and nice. Last night it was very cold out there. So turn off the light. The good one's coming. The, the good finale's coming. Whenever we have these uh, roundup videos, I just say the first thing I can think of. We, we have to do like a a list before we make the video mm -hmm. as to what we did because it can be hard to recap that yeah especially if it's been like six days or whatever it's a long frank oh. and that's not even all of the frank there's more frank <laughs> and then it, i i've only had like two bites of this frank they, they, they go they go hard on the meat when when you order meat um what's the worst moment that you can think of from the oh, kind of adventure like what's something that just was like a bummer that happened this morning sucked. <laughs> that man got our order wrong and that that spun into some shit, but uh, yeah. What about the lady who, the, the, that hotel that we stayed in in Toyako? Toyoko? Oh yeah, Toyoko. that was horrible. I've got it mixed up again. Toya. I can still smell that shower and I wish that I couldn't. Did you put a review on there? Because that, that needs a review for people who do not stay here unless feel, you have to. I feel weird giving bad reviews on Google. I don't know why. I just feel like... Maybe sometimes it's okay, or maybe I'm too picky, or whatever. Like, which is kind of. I don't no know, one's weird expecting that shower. The shower is pretty bad, but I think a lot. It's an onsen town. A lot of people just go into the onsen. I guess I don't know. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, I guess if we'd gone into the onsen, we could have had a better time. So it stands to be that, like, I still find Hokkaido to be one of my favorite parts of Japan. I really like it up here. Every place that I've been in Hokkaido has got some sort of like little sparkle to it <laughs> even if it's like a like a like a dingy fishing village or something there's something about just Hokkaido in general that I would do really quite enjoy so really happy we came back up here and I know it's not gonna be our last visit I know we'll be back up here at some point mm, you keep talking about coming in the winter and I keep yeah. thinking I'm gonna need like 18 more layers because gonna... I it's spring and I am already wearing all the coats I own uh, you can see it looks a little I feel like <laughs> Is it cold <laughs> you do look like Kenny <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy more coats. We aren't we aren't adapted to cold. I sit over here trying to eat, but it's just like impossible. Like I can't concentrate on this. There's too much going on in this bowl, which is exciting. So let's round this up and just do uh, let's do the end card thing where we remind everybody to like follow us on all the social medias, the Twitters and the Twitches and the Instagrams. And if you've been following us while we're here on Instagram, when we go on trips like this, I post stories, like a lot of stories during the trips that we go on. So if you want to follow along with things more in like real time, mm. that's like the easiest way to do it. Um, and if you'd like to get a sneak peek at pork in the future, you can go on to Patreon and uh, support us on there. And uh, you'll get early, re uh, early, early releases yeah. of uh, pork yeah. content. The, the Patreon people saw this wiener three days before everybody else did. Yeah. So, so that's got to have some value. If that is something that you are interested in, I would highly recommend rolling over to Patreon. And thank you to everybody on there for making this pork happen. And then, uh, yeah, the other thing we're slamming on, hit the hit the Twitter, hit a, or a Twitch, Twitch, just too many Twitch, Twitch. Hit the Twitches, um, trying to get things going over there a little more like in a serious manner, so. And people keep saying, I didn't know you were on Twitch, so now you know. Uh, yeah, so we've got a train to an airplane, to a whatever, to a whatever, to a home, and we'll be home at like midnight or something. I think that's how this is gonna go. Mm -hmm. it takes like a full day to get from here to there. Basically, how it is. Yep, it's gonna take a very long time, but we are in the outer reaches of Hokkaido. It's second largest city. <laughs> is it just me, or uh, is that a lot of toilet paper?
This little phrase on the wall at the train station says, today's opponent is tomorrow's friend. That's nice. Check your mic. Check, 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 check. Is it in the right dimensions? <laughs> it is in the right dimensions. It's in the circle. <laughs> Down to the bottom? Yeah. <laughs>